The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Chapman. Good morning, everyone. Basil Chapman here on this Wednesday, the 15th of May, mid-month, and we're looking at the Dow up 150 at 39,708. What is important about that? It is very close to the 30... I should type that in over here so that I've got it a lot clearer. To the 39,889 March 21st all-time high, so the high today is about 100 points lower than that. I suspect we're going to test it at some point this week. Uh, there's still internal strength. Look at this. The 9 period moving average is really strong. Uh, we have this left side, right side price time match. I thought I was nuts when I was uh, drawing this. I chose that candle right there to make the... Um, to make the plumb line, the plumb line, what's the plumb line? Let me just show you a plumb line right here. Uh, it's where I like when the plumb line is number of bars down or the number of bars up goes to a particular level and you say, you know, this could be a midpoint for the number of bars on the right side to go back to where it was on the left side. Uh, but sometimes you look at the pattern, you say, it's a lopsided cup, I call it a gravy cup because it's kind of lopsided. So you have to find another candle or another uh, point of, of contact that you can use. So in this case, I use this, as very often, I use the trough after a D low, and this is the one I use right here, and that got us exactly to the level that we were looking at for the target of Dow. <clears throat> this is a daily chart on the left, weekly chart in the middle, monthly chart is on the right, and that was a high of 30, uh, 30, uh, 9, no, it's at 21. And what happened was, you see this plumb line right here? There it is. Click right there. The number of bars to the right got you to that exact level. I think, oh, it was one day early. Sorry, it was one day early. No, what was it really? Did it go to 21? I can't remember now. Um, it went to... Uh, no, just under 39,413. Missed it by seven points. And then the next day, it took it out. And then I had another one with the Chapman Wave inside wedge target resistance line, dash green line. I have all these different techniques, myriad uh, techniques that we uh, developed over the years. And look, it kind of bumped up against it, bumped up against And today, it spiked higher and went right to it. And we have technically until the 16th, until tomorrow, to make a, a test of the left side high that I'm looking at, which would be this one right here, the, the low underneath the all-time high. It was on the 28th of March at 39,868. And what did we do today? We went to 39,794, getting really close, got a day in which to try for it. Okay, with that said, <clears throat> the weekly chart is really strong. The monthly chart is only at a peak C, and I'm still anticipating that there will be a D before we have to be a little careful hmm. looking at that. Well, if you want to be careful at leg D, what about this, the S&P? Monthly chart has already gone to a leg D. I just want to check. I think it made it by a fraction. Uh, let's see. That in March, the high was 526485. Ho, ho, ho. That is D. This is actually an E. Oh, interesting. Maybe even an instant restart. Oh, this is going to be, oh, what an exciting summer we've got coming up. Um, we're starting to get to a point on the very short term where we're getting very close to some kind of a pullback. And the question came up, uh, where, where do I think the S&P can go to on the downside? Well, let me put it this way. For the nine period weekly to go negative, to go from green to pink, my visual, I can't do it mathematically because there are a whole bunch of connotations that I, I can do it visually only because I've, I've done it so many times in the in the e-mini when I'm trading, whatever it is. This You get used to it. Now, there is a pattern that I could use. Using this as a fulcrum, I could say you could get a one-to-one -one of that to the downside. I don't want to do that because 
that's just not what I do. What I do is I look at this and I say, that was your Chapman Falling Axe Formation. So I use all the techniques that I have to say, what would I be looking at for a failure pattern? Well, the weekly chart in the S&P, the big support will be at, it depends when it is, because it's a declining trend lines. So every week, every bar will be have a lower low. But let's just put it this way. Uh, give it a week or two, and I'd say 5,027. Wow, that is 250 points lower. That would be to get to have a chance of the green nine period moving average going closer to the black 14 period moving average before going pink. Pink is negative. Look what happened when it turned up and went green and it's still green. This is from the November 3rd, I believe. But on the weekly chart, it was the next week, 11.10. And that was from around the 43, 43 low. And look where we've gone to. Today's high of 52.79. I... I must tell you, it's going to take a lot to. Oh, let me just do this because I did this with uh, I did this with Jacob yesterday when he was interviewing me. Let me show you. So what I look for is an internal low and a residual low. Think earthquake and um, aftershock. Uh, internal low, residual. I do the same thing on the upside. I hardly ever type it in because what I do is I start to say this is the dark news index. And it says that in this case, we were talking about, uh, this is July of 2023. We were looking, oh, this goes back. I can just show you this for, for years but, uh, going up to this point. But I'll do it from here. So that was the internal high in July of 2023. Uh, There's a daily chart. And it double topped and made a residual high, meaning in this case it was lower, and a pullback sharp because the rates were going higher. Same thing back in August of 2023. Uh, internal high, residual. I don't want to take too much time other than to say there's been an internal low and a residual low, and that's why we've got a leg that should go to a leg D at least in the upside to the upside. So, And that means we're challenging. I say this is great because we're not really seeing very much in interest rates. They're just kind of meandering along sideways. So I call this a gray sideways consolidation. This one was different because yields did go higher. All of a sudden, what we've got is, let's get out of this, we've got something very different. We've got the TLT for the very first time in a while. Oh, I always do that. I must type it right here. Sorry. There we go. I'm looking to find where my TLT chart is. And it flips immediately to daily, weekly, monthly. There it is. Daily, weekly, monthly, which has flipped to a leg D. Sorry, which has rallied to a leg from the 87.50 low. It went to today's right now. 91.91 is the high. It's trading at 91.69. So that was saying, you remember yesterday I was looking at the TBT and I said, everything about it looks like you're going to make lower lower lows and that was basically the yield so look at this you've got the tbt trading lower trough a all you do is you count each successively lower trough trough a trough b little truffles there trough c and you've got a d right there and it says that the 3437 200 period exponential moving average has to be key support or else it goes even lower but look at this You've got the Chapman Wave inside track propellant zone in the weekly chart, and we're there, and it's still green. The 9 3 moving average is over the 14 3 moving average. I just spoke about that as soon as I returned. Basel Chapman, Tiger, Dow's up 138, SP's up 26. Um, We'll talk about many things when we return that's relevant to the market. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. 
published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the newsletters tab. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. I was just asked if I could look at the dollar again. Yeah, the dollar's making lower lows and lower highs. Um, it's the nine period moving average is weak. The MACD is weak. The stochastic is at 31%. And the relative strength actually is holding okay but it is starting to make lower lows so that's it but the weekly chart is still very strong so if you put it together eur usd here we go euro dollar currency pair this is making that missing leg d there it is leg d right now does it make a peak d or does it and and then the high or is this it so i've got a lot of uh, a lot of um there's a lot going on if you're looking at the spectrum of the different, at least for me, the different charts that I like to look at for, for guidance, for uh, influence, for uh, some kind of uh, confirmation or non-confirmation. And if I'm looking at areas like uh, the euro, this is rallying sharply with gold. Uh, gold is pulled back quite sharply from the earlier uh, high, but now it's back up $8.00. It didn't, did it quite make, did it make a leg? See, I think it did by just a dollar. Let me just have a look here. Um, the high on yesterday, uh, the high on the 10th was 2385.3. Yes, very nice. So now you've got your leg C in the um, gold right here. If you're looking at, uh, I'm coming back to the levels that I'm looking at for the S&P. I just want you to get a, 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 I don't want to miss out on doing these different areas. Uh, silver is up. There's your leg C. Very nice. Uh, up uh, 0.32 at 29.03. That's very important. And then the weekly chart has made a peak D. That monthly chart did break out. It used the shape wave inside track propellant zone to, to have that uh, very big spike last month, but then it gave it back. And then I said, this is an inverted green Chapman Wave Roman candle. At any point in uh, May, I said, if there is, I'm not going to go with the daily close. I'd, I'd like it to be a little bit more thorough. I'm going to say if there's a weekly close above uh, the midpoint of 28 point, I think I said 30, I can't remember now. I'm just going to say 28.40, 28.40, and we're at 29.03 right now. Even this constitutes a, a move in the long wick 
of the monthly chart in the chamber of Roman candle. What is a Roman candle? It's where the price opens, makes a fractional either high or a fractional low, and then soars the other way, and then closes with the body of the candle halfway or more than halfway uh, from the long wick. You can see this is exactly what happened. It's more than halfway, but it, it, that's the chamber of Roman candle. And the rule of thumb is if within two sessions, I sometimes say three, but I really think two sessions, it goes uh, halfway into the wick and holds there in a shorter time frame. We're looking at a monthly chart. I should use a weekly, but very often I'll just use a daily because the monthly chart, when you, when you have that kind of power to go back into a long wick, that's very important. So theoretically, I should say we're kind of there, um, but it says there's a really good chance that you're going to see a move very quickly to the high of that uh, long wick candle. That would be at 30.18. So that would be an upside ta target. Um, and that's uh, you've got weeks to do because it's a monthly chart that I'm looking at. I'm giving it two months. So with that said, High grade copper had a huge move to the upside, um, and that has given back some of it. So a lot of what I'm looking at, and I was anticipating this was a possibility. So now I want to talk about what the questions have come in. Uh, two questions, which is one is where would I see the S&P going to if there is a sharp move down, and another is does the Dow lead, meaning that you have to wait for it to go to a D if the others are already at a D, at a peak D. Because in the Chapman Wave, let me just do this real quickly for those of you who are new to my notations. In the Chapman Wave, from an identifiable low bar, you count each successively higher peak, alphabetize them sequentially, uppercase A, B, C, D, and it goes to E, F, and G. But at D, the fourth highest peak, once it's upgraded to a buy, from a buy signal to a buy mode, the implication is it should go to at least a D. Well, that's your D. What happens after the D if within three bars you make a higher high? That means you can call that an alternate count E slash A, then, then F slash B, G slash C, which very often goes to the D. So that instant restart is a, a fantastic tool because it can, can take you to four higher peaks. With that said, what we had is a, an instant restart right here in the high-grade copper continuous contract. That was back in mid-April. And I counted it E, e slash A. F slash B, I haven't typed it in because you're supposed to memorize that part of it. And then you get your G slash C. Well, it also happens to be a D in the weekly chart and a D in the monthly chart. And the idea was that we wanted to see, look, here was a chap where we inverted Roman candle at the high back in, I think it was uh, March or so. Let me give you the exact date. March of 2022. And it went to high-grade copper 5.21. That number changes because it's a continuous contract. It gets smoothed out. But that, that peak was the peak. And uh, what did I say? It was 5.21. Uh, 5 and today's high is 5.12. We almost got there in this lopsided cup formation, copper continuous contract, also in leg D. So there are a number of things that I'm looking at that say, you know, I think we're getting somewhat overbought. We're getting really close to some kind of a consolidation. I don't want to over-anticipate it other, other than to have my technical tools and have it in the back of my mind because I haven't got it yet. So that's high-grade copper. Really good action. Pulling back today, having a long wick. We can turn this into a chapter with a Roman candle. If we, may, if we go down a little bit more, you've got to have that tiny wick. That's the wick that you like. And whoosh, that's what happens to a Roman candle. Okay. So that's something that I wish. And now let's go back to the S&P. And the question was, what What do I think? Oh, two questions. So I'll get to that as well. The first question is, where do I think would be a really important support? Well, 49.53.56 was the low in April. That was the low of what was it, 17th or something? 19th. 419. I may as well just put it in because I'm going to be talking about it a lot. 419.25. So I would say for the weekly chart to see the green nine period moving average turn pink, because if you're going to have a serious pullback, that has to go pink. If it's just another one of those big consolidations that take time, like this one, then look, it's one, two, three, four, five. It's five weeks. That's a long time in the market. 
to make this V-shaped pattern to go back full circle. So let's just imagine this one is going to be sudden. There's suddenly some news, whatever it is, and we just cascade lower. That's what you need to see, to see the green line period moving average in the weekly chart go negative. And that, I think, would take you underneath the 49.53 low that was made on the 19th of April. I go one step at a time. I haven't even got a sell signal. I haven't even got a reversal in the daily chart. I'm not going to go there right now. I'm just going to say, yes, there are times, once in a, it's rare, it is absolutely rare, but if you had to go, let's just go to the YM for a moment, to the Dow, YM. That's, that's the leg C. So there are times where you fail if there's a PPF at all time high in the, in the futures at 40,358. And we're quite a bit under it right now with a high of 39,918. There are times where under the previous high, the price failed. I'll talk about how that scenario will work out and what to look for. I'll be back. Dow's up 141. S&P's up. If you spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kickstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey. Because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. This portion of the Tiger Technician's Hour is brought to you by Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. Visit Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. 
Oh, look, I, I just need to talk about this because I asked, asked about the uh, E-mini uh, one and five minute charts and I'm also going to go, I see there was a question about uh, the five minute gold chart. Okay, so I like to look, I, I have webinars, one of the webinars that I have is on this particular pattern right here and it's called the long narrow rectangle. I have a large rectangle, a whole bunch of uh, kind of uh, parameters that you need to watch and monitor and how you can trade it and a long narrow rectangle and the rule basically in the long narrow rectangle and I'm going to do this I'm going to make this kind of a dark and we'll watch it over the next week or so uh, make this uh, thick weight make it a little bit thicker make it a color let's make it a nice thick bluish color there you go okay so here's your narrow this big spike at 830 Woof! all of a sudden the market goes and then it stalls so what I drew in is this the parameters. And the parameters said that you're kind of stuck in a narrow range, well, narrow after all the stuff that's occurred. And that narrow range was between uh, 52, around about 52.89. And the high that was made of uh, 52, right there, <clears throat> 53.03. So it, it doesn't sound like much, but when you're looking at it and it's going on and on and on, that's a pretty narrow range, right? So what happens is I decide that I'm going to make a halfway marker right there. And that halfway marker is at uh, 5297. And that just says that if the marker, if this continues sideways, there's a chance at some point it's going to make a peak D or an E just at or just above that big spike high. Then you've got to monitor closely because if it takes out the halfway marker of the, of the rectangle, there's a really good chance that not only does it test the low, but it breaks under it. And then it does it so quickly that it's like, oh, I forgot my to say goodbye to my friends, and I have to rally. So it tries to rally, and the big clue is if it takes out, if it stalls at this midpoint trend line, horizontal trend line, watch out because it can go very sharply back, and this time it'll go even lower. But if it holds the stars to trade above it, all of a sudden, you've got yourself a rectangle that says, oh, now we're going to test the upside again. Every time it does it, you think, oh, oh, break out, but it doesn't break out. So I'm watching this very closely because look what we've done. We've gone right to that 5302, um, that, that high that was made and retested uh, at about 942 this morning. And that's just saying this internal strength. That's really what I wanted to point out using this particular technique. So it says now the midpoint, that 5297 level, will be really important because this time if it takes it out, watch out because that it go to the next key icon, really important icon, and that's the 200 period moving average of 5289, right? Now what's important is I had this question coming up about the five-minute chart. <clears throat> and look, we're starting to break above it. Once you start to break above it, that's, look at that nine period. This is exactly what I was talking about, the weekly chart. The weekly chart in the Dow and the S&P, all the indices, that nine period moving average never went pink. It did not go under the 14. And look at what you did. You went sharply below it a couple of times, and now you're up above. And that just says it's like, it's like a trampoline. Keep testing, testing, testing. All of a sudden, you can spring much higher. So that's what I'm looking at right now. So the question came in. Gold. Can I look at gold? Well, I actually did gold a little earlier on today because I wanted to see what was happening with gold because that was very important to what happened uh, to the bonds, etc. Oh, I didn't do it, huh? I thought I did. Maybe I didn't. Okay, so let's just take it from this obvious low right now. So that's an A, B, C, D. Hits E and then it pulls back and then you get that 830, so the, the bonds... So the yields went higher and gold went up much higher. Look, Chapman Wave Roman candle, and it went into this, but it couldn't close above it, right? This is the level that we're looking at right there. Oh, the exact level. So that is uh, uh, 2380. And it, it failed and it came down and it broke to a lower low and used the 200 period moving average. So, what was the question, Basil? The five minute gold chart is percolating almost like an arm wrestling contest. Who wins the day for the, bear, or the, the bears or the bulls? Well, I like this action right now. It's trying to go back. And this time, if it can hold above 
2380 for, I'm going to have to say, for at least two minutes, because it's a five-minute chart, a uh, ten-minute chart, I'm going to say three minutes, there's a real good chance to try to go for the high of the deck. Meantime, this is a very good candle. So let's just skip that. Now we want to look at questions that came in. So all of this is leading me to talk about why I'm impressed with what's working. Look at Goldman Sachs, all-time high as we speak, 463.52. It's trading at 463.19, up 472. Leg E in the, and it could even be an instant restart because with the three bars, you made a higher high. I think this is actually more topping action. And that's the reason why I'm a little nervous about the, the next few days because I think we are going to get a D in the Chapman Wave methodology for the Dow. And then you're going to have all the indices at a level where that's where you can anticipate. You don't th you don't know it's going to happen, but you can anticipate that maybe that's where you're getting to be a little overbought. And look at the nine-period moving average right here, way above the 14. For Goldman Sachs to become bearish, bearish enough to really turn the market down, because I think now I had spoken about this ages ago. I said I did a, a webinar way back on, the 19, on 1929. And in that, I was shocked when I went through Everything about it, that I had read about Goldman Sachs, how they went public, just a whole bunch of things. How Right up until the last 10, 10, 12, 15 years, Goldman has been an absolute leader. But since, and especially since 2022, the, you can see this cup formation. I think there were, there were a bunch of things going on. There was a change in attitude, but that attitude has changed again. And I think they're the winners. Goldman Sachs, that's what we have to monitor for the next six months, because that's going to tell us when the general market makes its big top, if it's going to do that sometime this year. And look at the IAI. IAI is very, oh, what a nice move to the upside, 118. Uh, and this is a breakout in the weekly chart. Look, it's a weekly chart breakout. So I, I ha and it's an all-time high. This is what we've been talking about all the time for the we are long the from a long time ago in the 45s. The IAI. The, iShares broker deal ET and security ETF just for clarification. But yes, even here it could be a potential Chapman Wave instant restart. I don't believe it, but I, I don't think it is. Probably going to go to it's an E. Maybe it'll go to an F. And then I think we've got to be somewhat careful. Careful just means that maybe adding new positions at that point is a little bit more risky. All right. So with that said, now I can say quite clearly that for the S&P to get that big move down that some people are anticipating, um, if they are correct, you would need to see, and I'm going to give it all the way to next Wednesday, a week from today. If a week from today, I don't care what the reason is, um, the S&P is trading under 172, uh, quarter, uh, 50, under, one, under 5170. We're trading now at 5281. We'll talk about them when I return. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. The stock market is a delicate interconnecting web of commodities, equities, and trader psychology. When one string of the web is pulled, it has a ripple effect across the broader market. This is where opportunity lies. But how are you to gather all of this information into one cohesive model when you're already spending your energy looking for any possible trade opportunities? Luckily, you don't have to worry about that, as Tom O'Brien has brought all important market news to you in one single newsletter, Market Insights. Market Insights provides a daily overview of what's happening in the indexes, bonds, gold, and more. Follow along with Tom daily as he analyzes the components that affect the overall movement of the stock market, giving insight into how each one plays either a bullish or bearish role. 
Tom also analyzes specific equities that he believes has the potential to make huge returns, and his track record proves his analysis right. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Don't let the market leave you in the dust. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Dot com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. So, yes, uh, Queb, which is what I think I did yesterday, that is the, uh, uh, that is the China, uh, China Internet ETF has gone to a leg G slash D, but that is an instant restart. That's actually, I believe, a brand new, I, I'm going to call it a G slash C and say that, that was a brand new uh, buy signal right here, and it should go to a slightly higher high. Leg C in the weekly chart, and the other one that I was asked about, and where was it, was ADM, not AMD, but ADM. Um, I mean, this is Taiwanese. Yeah, hi, 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 oh, that was two separate questions, yes. So uh, ADM is, uh, I think that's the question, it wasn't AMD, it was ADM, and that is um, uh, Archer Daniels Midland. Gosh, I had this all notated, I don't know what happened to the notation. Yeah, just this is going sideways. I just be careful, and the grains actually are doing some weird things. They're kind of getting stuck in the low range. I, I'll do this again maybe tomorrow if I, if I see anything interesting, but right now it's just kind of stuck. Now, before I wrap up, I want to do a couple of things. Number one is I wanted to say that um, in tomorrow, I've had a bunch of questions. I want to do quite a lot tomorrow, and I think for my subscribers, I'm going to be doing um, my overview tomorrow night, Thursday night, because I won't be able to do it Friday, and uh, the equipment I use, I won't be able to use for about a week. Um, so that's what I needed to do. That's number one. Number two is I'm handing over to Steve Rhodes. Should be great programming today. But most importantly, I don't see just yet weakness. I'm seeing, look, let me just go back to the Dow and show you. Look, the, the Dow is a very strong candle up to 10. Uh, we added to the Dow on the long side the other day. We're looking at uh, the SMHs. Look at this, SMH. Mm -mm. Fabulous move up, up almost $4. It looks like it wants to test the old high. Um, very good action. It's even got the potential for an instant restart once again. I, I just I think these are going to F or maybe even a G or but what it is, I don't think we're going to have an instant restart. We don't know because so far the buying just keeps coming in. So keep that in mind. The other thing is um, the VIX index, just a real quickly as we're about are we wrap and wrap up? Oh no, why am I rushing? I got the time wrong. Oh. Huh. La, 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 plenty of time. So I don't have to rush that. The SMHs. Now let's go to NVIDIA. You remember the round numbers at the high and what a move down we had? Huge move. What about the round number at the low, 762, the day that it made its 756.06 low on the 19th of April? Very nice move to the upside. Leg E, um, 974 was the round number. 974.00 goes down to the seven. 50s and 762 has come all the way back. It's now at 937. Let's look at those things. The monster, which was MicroStrategy, has a huge 1999.99 all time high, one penny away from 2000. But wait a minute, the same day on the 27th of March, it had 1953.00 round number open and a 1942 round number close. <clears throat> well, that took it down to where? I would say 1999, let's call it 2000, 
down to 1,010 round number low on the uh, 29th of May, was it? What was it? On the 1st of May, sorry, 1st of May, not 29th of April, it was 1st of May, and here we are at 1,378. Nice turnaround from a round number low, and you can just go tons and tons of charts that did exactly the same thing. So with, uh, with that said, uh, the question came in, oh, I wrote it down, where did I write? Oh, that's right. So um, the queer, but did I do queer or did I suddenly get distracted? Easy to get distracted on a day like this. No, queer has key support now. It's at thirty-one point oh one, and um, I think over the next couple of weeks, I'm looking at the chance that it's going to test the high that was made back in January of twenty twenty-three at thirty-six nineteen. Yeah, thirty-six nineteen. Trading at 31.01. That would be my target on the upside, but I don't have a time time for that. I could work it out now. Um, yeah, I don't want to. The first target it has to break before you can even talk about that higher high is the 3206 high of the week of the 4th of August. All right. And if I do it on a visual basis, I would say that should be within a week, within a week should pop about a point and a half to get to the 32s. All right. Next thing I want to look at here was, oh, IYT. The IYT, this is fascinating. Look, the IYT made an all-time high. 70.60 was the high of May 2021. I would call that three years ago. And then it had retests, and it, it just had a ton of retests over that year. And then it plummeted down to the 40, to the, about the 48 area. <clears throat> ah, ah, comes right back. Look, there's a beautiful time price match using this particular technique. The number of bars on the downside from the May high of 2021 equal the number of bars to the uh, to the low of October 22nd at 48.18. Let me just put that in here. 48. This is a technique that I developed, and I have webinars. If you want to sign up, you can sign up for 2022. Uh, there it is. And look at the number of bars to that exact high three months ago. Right there. And what it's done is it snuck to a higher high. It went to 71.16, had a double top at 71.11 back in March, and then plummeted down to the 64 area, just under 64, and now it's starting to rally again. But the IYT is to, another reason why I'm looking at this and saying, you know, not all the ducks are in order. There's something not quite right here. So that's just telling me that there's a chance that there's a lag. If my, I'm not using Dow theory. I'm just, I like the fact that if you're getting all-time highs in the Dow and the S&P, et cetera, I would like the transportation average. Uh, it's not uh, iShares transportation average ETF. It doesn't have the same clout that it had way back in Dow's day uh, uh, because the, the transports are made up of so many different se segments. You've got your trucking, you've got your rails, you've got your airlines. Let's look at Jets. Uh, jets right now, that's the airline Jets ETF. They've got the H pattern. It's gone to a peak A, peak B. Big A, big B, and this is a C. Yeah, this is a C. So let me just do that. And the weekly chart, is that an F? But it's just a continuation pattern. See how important the 200-period moving average is? Once you touch it, it can stick there for a long time. A long time is, oh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. 13 weeks it's been stuck there. So Jets is improving. But it's really lagging, isn't it? And for anyone, I, I don't. It's like redundant, but I'm going to say it. Anyone caught a anyone on a plane lately? I mean, first of all, you have no idea if you're going to arrive on time because it could be diverted for, for any one of a dozen reasons. And the other is, um, it's so crowded. It's so. I mean, you, you're sitting very cramped. It's just. It's it's tough stuff. So this is a leg C. So it's still positive on the daily chart of Jess. The weekly chart is really in a kind of a, a, a um, consolidation phase because it made a lower low after that D. That E is the top there, and this has to become a brand new A, and this is a brand new F slash B. So the, um, 
So the weekly chart is improving, it's doing quite nicely. The technicals are kind of good, it's only at 76%, but everything else is pretty good. So we'll see. So I've put it together, and I'm going to once again say, I have to have patience to make some kind of topping action here. I think we're getting close to the shorter, but we haven't got this. I'll be right back. Tiger, you've seen his show, you've learned from his webinars, and now it's time to trade side by side with him. Join Larry Pesavento for the second month of his new service, Live Trading Fridays. Hosted in the Tiger's Den trading room on Discord, Larry has analyzed a number of commodities and indices, placed profitable trades, and explained his method. Whether you're new to trading or are a seasoned market veteran, trading side by side with a titan like Larry Pesavento will only enhance your game. Utilizing Fibonacci retracements and ABCD structures, Larry provides decades of insight into when to place trades, when to exit, when to ignore, and so much more. Learning is doing. So if you're serious about learning technical analysis and becoming profitable in this uncertain market, Live Trading Fridays is a must-have tool in your arsenal. Live Trading Fridays occur every second and fourth Friday of the month, so trading events for this month are May 10th and 24th. If you're serious about trading, we'll see you there. TFNN, educating investors. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey. Because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento. A pro's pro with over 50 years of experience, Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. So another reason why I think that we should be going a little higher, even though there's some little digestive phase today, and we kind of had it yesterday, so we'll see if we can pull back sharp. If the Dow, which is now up 193 by Three ten this afternoon is only up uh, 75 points. Then you're giving back a chunk. I, I just see buying coming in. A lot of people, a lot of people just don't believe what's going on. So this is the XLF. It's in leg C. I think it's going to go to a higher high. Um, and if it does, there's a chance that it makes an all-time high. The high that was at 41.70. The S&P Select Financial Spine Fund. All of this is really good news. So um, yeah. So as it stands right now, my bias is still not looking at shorts, just looking at the longs, getting close to thinking about shorts, but only thinking about them at this particular time. Well, it is getting warm weather. We'll talk about shorts at another time. But in the meantime, back at the ranch, I'm going to hand you over to Steve Rhodes. Uh, there should be great programming today. This is a perfect time to be going through all these different charts and just the, the action and reaction. Oh, question came up about... Uh, I was speaking about the SLX yesterday. Is there any change? Well, the SLX is the Vanek Vector Steel ETF. That's another reason why I'm saying we're getting a little bit tired here. It's down 26. 
at 71.52. It actually should have been making its leg D today, and it isn't. So I am looking at areas that are saying kind of overbought, need a little bit of a breather coming up, but it hasn't done that yet. The BTC, which is the Bitcoin futures continuous contract, very nice move today. Is that going to turn the nine period moving average green for the first time and then join the weekly? So far, it's held really well. I said it was in a consolidation phase back when it made that high, the 75,000 area. Well, it's been making lower lows and lower highs. Now you're going to see whether the, um, what, the daily chart is able to get from 64,830 into the 68,000 area. I, I think it's going to struggle a little bit. That's the way I'm looking at it right now. So have a great rest of the day. Uh, check out my opening call, my daily newsletter. We've had some real nice positions. And at the same time, I'm saying to you, have a great day. I'll see you tomorrow.